good day everyone and welcome to these lectures on adsorption method which is used as one of the physico chemical processes for waste water treatment and in the previous lectures we studied regarding various uh, uh, adsorbents their properties which can be determined including pore size pore surface area etc in addition we tried to understand at the basic concepts of adsorption kinetics and adsorption isotherm so for determining adsorption kinetics and adsorption isotherm generally we use batch adsorption data so that means we add some uh, we have some waste water in which some adsorbent is added and we try to find out the uh, treatment efficiency and the adsorption capacity after some time so that is a like a batch adsorption process but in actual in the industry will always be con, uh, doing this water treatment in the adsorption unit, unit which is operated in a continuous mode so that means uh, we will be having a continuous mode of operation where the water uh, which contains some amount of pollutant will be fed from one side and will be continuously be getting water which is treated in the adsorption unit so for doing this generally we use packed bed sorption column so uh, these packed bed sorption columns uh, or packed bed units uh, are used other places also in various other unit operations so but we'll be considering the adsorption or sorption column where it is being used as an adsorbent it is possible that some other types of reactions are also carried out in the pack bed so that is there so we will be having one column in which the water will be fed we, we can see the waste water to be treated is being fed and from the outlet we are getting the water which is already treated and we can analyze the water with respect to uh, its uh, treatment efficiencies and other things so these parameters we can find and we we what we do is that we uh, fill the bed with certain amount of adsorbents which may be sand it may be any other type of adsorbent so in general in chemical processing pad beds are very common and essentially the pad beds they are cylindrical tubes or pipes or any other types of vessels generally they will be tube or pipes and that are filled with some packing material the packing may be randomly filled with a small objects like rasis ring etc in packed beds which are used for uh, adsorption or for some other types of catalytic reactions in place of uh, uh, packings we have catalyst particles or adsorbents so these adsorbents for uh, adsorption case they may be zeolite any granular activated carbon or any other type of uh, adsorbent that we have to use for the water treatment so uh, these uh, other way around they may be called as fixed bed adsorbers also so in the fixed bed adsorbers uh, we can use them for removal of various types of dyes colorants refractory pollutants many other types of toxic pollutants etc from water or waste water the size of the bed Uh, will depend upon the gas or the liquid flow rate or the whatever is the our treatment that has to be done so uh, this will be dependent upon the size including the length and the diameter of the bed so that is uh, very important so that depends upon that how much water we have to treat and if the liquid flow rate is very very high we can divide the Uh, flow rate into various parallel uh, flow rates uh, which can be treated further on by a number of parallel pack beds which are being used there now uh, the bed length may vary from 0.3 meter to 1.3 meter or higher also it is possible but these are the general range we can go up to uh, high uh, length also 5 meters or beyond also so depending upon the type of adsorbent we are going to use how much water we have to treat and uh, what is the characteristic of water that has to be treated now the gas or liquid 
uh, it, these packed beds can be used for gas separation also. So, the gas or liquid uh, flow rate may go downward or upward depending upon various properties and uh, through the adsorbent particles which are there in the bed itself. Inside the bed the adsorbent particles are placed on a screen or some perforated plate uh, so that uh, we have uh, a proper uh, channeling of the uh, proper distribution of the uh, influent takes place before treatment. Now, when the adsorption reaches the desired value, so uh, after certain time, so whenever what we do is that we have to see that the flow rate is then uh, is decided in such a manner that the influent or the liquid that has to be treated that remains in the in the packed bed for a certain duration of time which may be decided from the batch data itself. So, that desirability is already there with respect to residence time that we have to give. So, the feed goes to the uh, uh, when the when that much time is given and after the treatment the liquid comes out. So, if the it is up to the desired level of treatment it is ok otherwise it may be fed to another bed which may be there in the in the series or it is possible that this bed may further be operated in a uh, regeneration mode. So, that uh, at the spent adsorbent may be again be used again in the next cycle. So, this is possible the regeneration process uh, in the like for gas separation or for some of the pollutants uh, can be carried out by steam or by using some solvents etcetera. So, this is possible. Now, the adsorption cycle may vary from different 2 to 24 hours or may be higher for larger beds. So, depending upon this the adsorption cycle may be decided for a small bed uh, the pressure drop uh, is one of the essential criteria. So, uh, the flow rates pressure drop all these are very important criteria which actually help in deciding whether we have to use how many beds or what should be the length of the bed or the diameter of the bed. So, these parameters can be decided depending upon number of parameters. Now, the concentration of solute in the fluid phase and of the solid adsorbent phase they change with time and with position in the fixed bed at the adsorption process proceeds. So, when in the, in the initial phases the, the first layer of the bed will get exhausted. So, and similarly the second bed. So, it is possible that for long duration the solute which is coming it is within the desired limit, but after some time the solute which will be coming out or the effluent which is coming out it will not be up to the desired limit and it will break through conditions will be there where the concentration limits have been breached and the desired treatment efficiency is not achieved. So, this is possible. Similarly, the adsorption which occurs, so it also moves across the bed. So, this is written, so we will try to understand this in further slides. At the inlet to the bed, the solid is assumed to contain no solute at the start of the process, but as the treatment goes on, just these solid particles get exhausted and the adsorption mass transfer zone or adsorption in, in the adsorption zone moves through the bed. So, this is there and uh, as the fluid or the liquid passes through the bed the concentration of the uh, pollutant in the liquid drops very rapidly with the distance in the bed and reaches 0 well before the end of the bed is reached. So, thus we achieve the targeted removal efficiency. So, but it is possible that after some time when saturation is reached, so and most of the mass transfer and adsorption will reach to the end point and after that the removal will not occur properly. Now, in the packed bed there are number of parameters that we should decide and one of the essential parameters are uh, like empty bed contact time and 
sorbent usage rate or adsorbent usage rate also we can call it. Now, contract time or the duration in which the adsorbent or the liquid is inside the uh, pack bed that is very important parameter. So, contact time is very important parameter in the design of adsorption columns and it is generally expressed as EBCT. EBCT means empty bed contact time. So, it is one of the parameters that helps in deciding that what should be the EBCT or what should be the residence time etcetera. So, EBCT affects the volume to breakthrough and the shape of the breakthrough curve. So, this is there and it is determined by using the following formula which is uh, given here by V c by q and V c is the actually the volume of the column. So, total volume of the column and q is the flow rate. Now, uh, V c can further be written as A c into z. So, A c is the cross sectional area of the column and where z is the height of the column in which the pack bed material is kept. So, uh, this is there. So, it is very straightforward calculation. Now, in addition to that the performance of fixed bed can further be evaluated in terms of adsorbent usage rate okay, and which is defined as the weight of the sorbent or adsorbent saturated uh, per decimeter cube or per liter of the adsorbate solution being treated. So, this is there and it can be defined as uh, uh, like m c divided by v b and uh, further uh, we can calculate is like v c into density. So, uh, this this is m c is the mass of the sorbent in the column. So, mass of the sorbent can be written as the volume of the sorbent into density. So, this is there. So, uh, we can calculate and the breakthrough v b is called as the breakthrough time. So, uh, breakthrough time is like uh, when we actually initially start the treatment process what happens is that. So, uh, we can understand it like under here. So, we have a packed bed okay, and in the packed bed some treatment is happening. So, suppose the flow rate is upwards okay, and we have C 0 is the concentration and after some time after treatment the concentration here is C. So, uh, this is there. So, when the adsorption will happen. So, this is the time suppose. So, initially and we have on the y axis we decide like uh, C by C 0. So, uh, this is there. So, it initially what will happen that the concentration will be virtually nil here. So, whatever is the adsorbate that will get adsorbed inside this packed bed. So, that is possible. So, inside this packed bed the treatment will occur and here the concentration will be virtually be 0. So, the graph initially will be lying in the at the bottom, but after some time it will start it will start increasing and it will go up like this. Okay. So, the time in which we have breakthrough is achieved. So, this is called T b time for breakthrough and where the concentration suppose we want the C by C 0 to be 0 0.1. So, whenever this C by C 0 reaches 0 0.1 condition. So, that will be the called as breakthrough time and the volume of water which has been treated up to this time is called breakthrough volume. So, this is what is given here. So, V c is the volume of the sorbent total sorbent in the bed volume V b is the breakthrough volume and breakthrough volume we can always be uh, we can write in terms of this total uh, N b is the number of number of bed volumes being treated up to breakthrough. So, N b is virtually uh, defined as uh, V b by V c. So, up, up to breakthrough how much 
amount of volume has been treated of wa water which is to be treated. Now, it is possible that breakthrough we reach in during very large time. So, we always want this, this N B value to be highest possible, so that we can treat maximum amount of uh, water. So, now in this case, so we, we have replaced V B by V C into N B. So, this V C V C can go off and we can like rho by N B. So, these two parameters uh, we always desire to be higher. So, sorbent usage rate if it is uh, uh, how much sorbent is being used per liter of uh, water being treated. So, we want this sorbent usage rate to be lowest possible because we do not want the sorbent to be used that much with respect to treatment of the per liter of the water or uh, any other volume of water. So, we can calculate some of the uh, calculations we can perform here like calculate the empty bed contact time for the perfusal adsorption in a packed bed of bagayas fly S at given conditions. So, the concentration suppose the initial concentration is 100 milligram per liter flow rate is 0 0.02 liter per minute bed height suppose is we are carrying out this work only in lab scale. So, suppose the bed height is only 15 centimeter and diameter of column is 2.45 centimeter. So, under that condition calculate the bed volume to break through and adsorbent usage rate actually this is 2.54 that is 1 inch column. So, this is 2.54 and so, what we do is that we try to find out the empty bed contact time and the density is given that the density is uh, 270.5 gram per liter for the adsorbent. Now, uh, this is given so, e, e B C T will be V C by Q and V C is equal to A C into Z by Q. Now, so, first we have to calculate the V C that how much volume of water has been treated. So, this is the cross sectional area into height of the bed. So, height of the bed is already given 15 centimeter. So, from here and 2.54 is the diameter of the uh, column. So, and depending upon that we can find out the V C. Now, the flow rate is also given 0 0.2 0.2 liter per minute. So, from here we divide by 0 0.02 to get the E empty bed contact time of 3.80 minute which is for this column. Similarly, we can find out the adsorbent usage rate because bed volume which has been number of bed volumes which have been treated up to breakthrough can be found out by using this equation. Okay, so, number of bed volumes to breakthrough can be obtained by using this particular equation which is V B by V C. Now, the volume in the column is already calculated and 3.87 is the volume which has been treated up to the breakthrough. So, if this is the condition which is already known to us, we can divide. So, 50.875 will be the breakthrough up to the breakthrough this much is the bed volume which has been treated number of bed volumes which can be treated. So, now adsorbent usage rate will be the density divided by N B P which is number of uh, bed volumes which have been treated up to breakthrough. So, we can calculate this is 5.32 gram per liter. So, we can through this we can find out the adsorbent usage rate and similarly we can calculate different of other parameters by carrying out experiment in the lab scale. Now, in addition to E B C T and the adsorbent usage rate there are other parameters that need to be calculated. So, this is uh, the breakthrough point that we have pointed out earlier the breakthrough point when the adsorbent reaches the characteristic limit suppose this is 0 0.01. So, if it is reaches this condition that means after that the bed is not good enough and the water which is coming out it is it contains the adsorbate 
up to a concentration which is not desirable and after some time there will be a point where the uh, the c by c 0 value will reach 1. So, that means here the exhaustion of the bed has happened. So, uh, this is the breakthrough or the concentration profile that is always there. So, this point is called breakthrough point, this point is called exhaustion point, sometimes we will be writing here T b, sometimes we will writing be here T e which is called as exhaustion point and, uh, and this ideally uh, the condition should be that and this is the zone from where the breakthrough point to exhaust point it is called mass transfer zone. So, what does mass transfer zone measures uh, we will try to uh, understand that and in the mass transfer zone uh, uh, we always desire this mass transfer zone to be lowest possible and in the actual case in the ideal case the profile should be like this it should be 0 and it should be it should reach uh, the desired uh, like it will when the bed should exhaust. So, in the uh, it, it should the breakthrough point and exhaustion point should be same. So, this is the ideal scenario, but uh, this is never the case and we try to find out predict the breakthrough point and exhaustion point also. So, prediction of breakthrough point is one of the important uh, considerations which can be observed from carrying out experiments in the lab scale and then upscaling it to the actual condition in the plant scale. Uh, uh, so, this is there. Uh, now, going further uh, these examples are given. So, we can see here that uh, as the height is increasing we can see the breakthrough point is suppose we are taking the breakthrough point of point 1. So, this this data is given here for uh, phenol sorption on a bagas fly as bed at different bed lengths and at different flow rates. So, we can see here clearly. So, breakthrough points is increasing with the increase in height of the bed. Similarly, with increase in flow rate we can see here the flow rates are increasing and with respect to flow rate as the flow rate is increasing the breakthrough time is decreasing. So, we can have a number of parameters which we have to analyze with respect to flow rate, with respect to height, with respect to diameter of the bed etcetera and we can optimize the, all those parameters in such a manner that the breakthrough time is highest possible. And prediction of breakthrough time with respect to various flow rates, height etcetera is one of the important thing that we have to determine. And within this uh, within this breakthrough concentration profile the mass transfer zone determination of mass transfer zone and minimization of mass transfer zone is also one of the important consideration. Now, uh, before we can under go further we should understand what is mass transfer zone. So, if we again draw the same packed bed ok and here suppose the bed is the adsorbents are filled all throughout this packed bed and the here again the C 0 is a concentration which is going inside and the concentration which is coming out here is C. So, initially what will happen as the as the liquid enters this. So, that the adsorption will happen in certain zone. So, suppose this is the zone in which the adsorption takes place. So, initially this this will be the area which will get exhausted after some time the adsorption will start occurring in the next zone. So, uh, that next zone. So, this in the next case this area will get exhausted. So, as these areas get exhausted they will reach a point where suppose this up till this area has been exhausted. Now, the whole bed below this is already exhausted and when now the adsorption will occur in this zone. So, some of the water will suddenly come out and that will the point that will be the point which is called as breakthrough point 
and when whole of the bed will get exhausted. So, that will be the point which is called as the exhaustion point. So, in practical this is called the mass uh, this is called the uh, zone in which adsorption is occurring and this is called the mass transfer zone. So, we always want this mass transfer zone to be minimum possible. We also want to uh, determine different parameters with respect to mass transfer zone. So, uh, this was uh, this is there. So, important thing is that mass transfer zone was introduced in the fixed bed columns operation to understand the evolution patterns or the breakthrough patterns which are there and to plan an efficient model for performance using uh, adsorption in a fixed bed column. So, some of the important parameters which are determined for mass transfer zone are like fractional capacity f and this is obtained when the proportional amount of adsorbent uh, actually involved in the absorption is divided by the total amount of adsorbent utilized for the mass transfer zone. So, what is the total amount of adsorbent and what is the actually being used? So, mass transfer zone with respect to previous curve which is given here, uh, we can easily calculate uh, uh, by using this formula. So, from breakthrough point to the exhaustion point. Uh, so, volume at the breakthrough, volume at the exhaustion point and we try to find out the area under the curve of 1 minus c by c 0 and t is the, is the exhaustion point and t b p is the breakthrough point. So, through that we try to find out the fractional capacity within the mass transfer zone. Similarly, height of mass transfer zone can be determined and it is actually the area where practically all the sorption takes place during the adsorption which is there. So, high what is the height of the mass transfer zone? It is it has a very important role in evaluating the removal rate of the adsorbent adsorbate by the adsorbent. Lower is the resistance offered by the system, more the kinetics of uptake for adsorbate uh, which is there and shorter is the height at any given instant. So, it can be calculated by using this formula which is given here. So, remember f is already known and since the f is already known fractional capacity, we can find out the, uh, the height of uh, a mass transfer zone uh, using this formula and in this the z is actually the total height of the bed. So, we are assuming that from exhaustion point to the breakthrough point. So, these, these are the value and what are the actual uh, actual fractional capacity within the adsorption zone at the end. So, this parameter we already know. So, from this we can find out the height of mass transfer zone. Uh, similarly, we always uh, as already told we always want that uh, we should be able to predict the breakthrough point T b and which can be a function of various parameters. These parameters could be flow rate, height, okay, diameter of the column etcetera okay, and the particle size of the suppose adsorbent. So, all these parameters are there. So, we it is always desirable to predict the breakthrough time higher the bit it is always desirable to have the highest possible breakthrough time. Now, there are within certain limitations that we want to keep the uh, pressure drop within certain limits etcetera. So, those parameters are also there. So, uh, this is always a desirability that we want to predict the breakthrough curve for safety removal. So, because of that a number of models were developed by different uh, scientists and they are used in predicting the breakthrough time. So, one of the uh, earliest model is called bed depth service time model and it is it was developed by Buhart Adams. So, and it is given by this expression. So, in this uh, slides we have actually just summarized different types of models. If anybody wishes to go further they can always look into the literature and the references which are given at the end. 
So, they can find out the number of more details of these models and the equation that we have represented here in these slides are linear form of these models. So, and they can be used for prediction of various types of breakthrough curve. So, and in these models a number of parameters are there like we can see a z is already known to us. So, k n 0. So, and this k is already known from the kinetics. So, the k c 0. Uh, C0 is already known because we at what condition, what concentration we are carrying out experiment. So, like K N0 uh, are the parameters with respect to Bohart Adams models uh, uh, or Bohart Adams model or bed depth service time model. Similarly, there is a model which is given as Thomas model and it assumes a plug flow behavior. So, this is one of the common assumption of Thomas model and it also uses the data of Langmuir isotherm. So, if in any condition we have Langmuir isotherm which is being followed and in the kinetics we have second order reversible reaction kinetics. So, Thomas model will fit very well or opposite way we can fit the data and cross check with that whether this model is uh, getting the uh, fitted or not and then we can use this model for prediction of breakthrough uh, curves at various conditions and it has certain parameters k t q 0 etcetera that we have to find out from the uh, data that is there with respect to c by c 0 versus versus time. So, that I will try to define little later. So, this is linearized form of the model. Similarly, there is a Yoon Nelson model and uh, it is based upon that the assum uh, assumption that the rate of decrease in the probability of sorption for each sorbet molecule is proportional to the probability of the sorbet sorption and the sorbet breakthrough on the sorbent. So, this is the uh, say very simple model and we can uh, in this we try to find out that what is the breakthrough time with respect to 50 percent breakthrough time. So, that is there and this equation can be used for finding out the Yoon Nelson model. Similarly, a Clark model is there. So, Clark model can be used for finding out various parameters here, here n represents the friendly parameter. So, if friendly model is fitting very well, so Clark model can be used. If Langmuir model is fitting well, then we can use the Thomas model. Similarly, Wolbuska model gives fitting up to 50 percent breakthrough curve very well and this was the uh, it this relationship can be used for determining the fitting of the Wolbuska model. So, this is there. So, we can find out different number of parameters which are listed here. So, in summary these are the different types of models which are there. Now, how to use the breakthrough data at the lab scale for finding out these parameters and these parameters how can they can further be used. So, let us try to see. So, in the what we do is the in the lab scale we perform some experiments like where we have uh, we have two three different types of small beds which may be there and in the bed uh, they may be of different diameter we can keep different height also and we can certainly change the flow rates also. So, at any flow rate suppose C 0 where the flow at one flow rate we have initial concentration is known and z is also fixed okay, and diameter is also fixed. So, what we do is that we try to find out with respect to time. So, the initial data that we get is with respect to time we try to find out the final concentration which is coming out. So, this type of data will be there with us. Now, once this is there what we will do is that we will try to find out C by C 0. So, if C by C 0 is there, so we will be we will be getting the graph that we already discussed few times. So, we will be having this type of graph and from this type of graph which will be there we can easily find out the breakthrough point. So, this is the time within the timeline 
we can experimentally find out the uh, time for breakthrough T b. So, this is possible and since we have this data which is there. So, we can integrate this curve numerically to find out this value. So, since flow rate is known we can either draw the graph with respect to time or with respect to volume also we can draw the graph. So, this will be T b or it will be V b and similarly this point will be T exhaustion point this can be exhaustion point or volume at exhaustion point. So, both will be known to us. So, if we can numerically integrate this part of the curve we can get this value which is there at the top or this value and once this is known and T e by T b p T b p is already known to us. So, we can find out the breakthrough point also and through this we can find out the fractional capacity. If fractional capacity is known we can find out the height of transfer zone. So, mass transfer zone so H z can be found out. Similarly, we can use the same data. So, we have C by C 0 versus time data. So, we can use convert that data into this form and take log of that and draw the curve with respect to time. So, if we can draw the curve and C 0 since already is known. So, slope of the curve will give k and once k is known other parameters like z can be known u is already known to we can find out n 0. So, if all these parameters are known we can find out the t value at any other condition. So, like if we keep take c by c 0 or c, b, c 0 by c equal to 10. So, we can predict at what z and c 0 values etcetera what will be the breakthrough time. Similarly, we can use the same data for finding these parameters. So, this is again known to us so, we can easily in this graph we can easily calculate this value. So, this is known we can draw the linear line with respect to this versus time and in this because it is fitted to with respect to Langmuir model we can find out q 0 from Langmuir model itself we can find out the k t value and m is uh, m values and from that again we can predict that. So, any of these models can be uh, fitted and the best fitted model can be used they have certain assumptions that we have to cross check that whether in the batch adsorption those assumptions are being met. So, we can be selective in using any of these models which have been listed here and once we can uh, we are already selected ok this is Thomas model we are going to use. So, we can uh, fit the Thomas model we can find out the parameters of the Thomas model and then the fitted model can be used for predicting the breakthrough at any other conditions also. So, uh, this is how we do this and this way we can decide the z flow rate and other parameters. So, that our breakthrough time is highest possible. So, through this we will end the adsorption section. These are the various uh, papers which have been used in find in adsorption section. So, you can refer to any of these uh, some of the papers are very good with, res with respect to breakthrough times and others. So, you can always refer those papers. So, all these papers have been used in all of the sections. So, you can use any of them. So, uh, thank you very much this paper is very good with respect to prediction of breakthrough curves. So, you can refer these papers and find out the uh, legitimacy of how to use these models etcetera. So, thank you very much.